The MAC Championship from Detroit, Ford Field, Toledo, and the Miami Redhawks. Folks, this one's easy for me. Toledo is a team that you never could trust as a favorite. I looked up Jason Candle is 6-10 and 10 ATS, 37.5% as a favorite of seven or more. He's actually been upset five times out of 16 games in that role. You look at Miami, again, two different teams. When Miami was a favorite this year of seven or more, they went a perfect 7-0 against the spread. What happened down the stretch? Well, Brett Gabbert got injured in that Toledo game that they lost 21 to 17. And while they finished the season 4-0, beating Ohio by 14, Akron by 19, Buffalo by 13, and Ball State by two points. In those last four games with Gabbert out, Avion Smith took over. He's completing only 52.5%, a 2-2 ratio, and they have averaged 267 yards per game and 12.5 yards per carry. What did happen is their defense was a bend but don't break defense. They shut Akron down, but Akron got into the red zone four times and didn't score. I, I mean, you watch that game, it's like, how the heck did they win this game 19 nothing? In the final game, they were also outgained by 149 yards. Now, yes, Gabbard is out and Smith is playing, but Levadian, their wide receiver is questionable. This is a kid who averages 17.5 yards per reception. He is by far the most dynamic skill player Miami Red Hawks have. He is questionable, so if you want to back Miami, please make sure you're checking out that situation. You look at Toledo. Toledo lost to Illinois on a last-second field goal, 30-28, to or they'd be running the table with a perfect record. Again, you have Daquan Finn, 65% completions, a 21-8 ratio, and he is also the team's number two rusher, 530 yards and 4.8 yards per carry. So can Miami's defense slow down Toledo? A little bit. Can Toledo's defense shut down Miami? Absolutely. In this game, I think Miami has to be very conservative to come out early. I'm going to look for the first half under here. Toledo is a run first team. They average over 40 rushes per game. They average over 212 yards per game. And they average 5.3 yards per carry. But that is Miami's strength on defense. They're allowing only 3.6 yards per carry, and that includes 274 yards and 5.2 in their final game against Ball State. Give me under here in the first half, and if I was forced to pick a side, I would have to lean with Toledo because the Miami Redhawks offense just has hurt my eyes the last month of the season. Yeah, you know, when I look at this, Miami Toledo game guys um we have a regular season matchup to go by right uh, Miami O gets beat by Toledo 21-17 in a game where Toledo built a big lead uh the game was played in Oxford uh, at the home of Miami of Ohio it's 21 to 3 at halftime Miami O comes back with a couple of quick touchdowns to make it 21-17 and as Ralph mentioned earlier Blaine Gabbert or excuse me um Brett Gabbert gets hurt and in comes Avion Smith for the fourth quarter. Uh, Miami made it to their own 48-yard line late in the game when Avion Smith fumbled on the Toledo 47, is subsequently ending the game 21-17. to So if there's anybody with motivation for redemption in this game, it would be Avion Smith who had that costly fumble at the end when Miami was – potentially driving to get themselves a win in that game. There was very little offense in that game. Again, to Ralph's point about can Miami's defense hold up? They held up in that first game. It was at home. I get that this is on a neutral site. In that particular contest, Toledo gains 318 yards. Miami only gains 299. Toledo only converts 26.7% of their third downs, 4 of 15 in that situation for them. And there were 14 punts in that game. So it's hard to argue anything surrounding the under in this particular contest. Um, Those numbers, by the way, for Toledo, the 318 total yards were a season low for this team. So Miami did the best job of preventing this offense from breaking loose, which is what they're known for. 
if you look at Toledo, a couple of things would really have to go right, and it's a long shot. But if Liberty loses, um, if uh, Tulane, I think it is, loses, then it's possible Toledo could get a New Year's Day bowl bid but uh, out of the group of six. But it's such a long shot. I don't know that you can even count that as motivation here. Um, Tulane does rank the highest at this point in time of all those group of six teams at number 23. So they'll know their fate by the time kickoff comes because Liberty plays New Mexico State on Friday night. Toledo's going to know whether or not Liberty won and whether or not the dream is still alive. We'll see. I wouldn't incorporate that too much into your handicap here. It's just a little something to think about. What's more important is Toledo covering large point spreads, which I think Ralph began to hit on this. It, they haven't been good uh, until the last four games of the season when they covered three out of four as double digit favorites. Um, they were only five and five as a favorite of eight and a half or better. Actually, they're eight right now in this game. It's come down a little bit. So as eight or better, they're only five and five where Miami O is nine and three against the spread. Chuck Martin, ever since he took over at Miami of Ohio, basically has been a point spread covering machine with the same type of team every year. Can't play any offense, play a lot of defense. Um, Miami's MO in this game, they're going to play at a snail's pace. They're the 130th slowest tempo offense out of 133 FBS teams. And they're going to just try and hang on defensively like they did in game one. This team will prevent big play touchdowns, which Toledo is extremely capable of and which Toledo a lot of times um, uses to gain margin in games. But where Miami of Ohio is concerned, they've only allowed three touchdowns outside the red zone all season long. So it's a, like Ralph said, bend but don't break, kind of an umbrella-style defense that's going to make Toledo be patient, see if they can go ahead and um, work the whole field for their scores. Again, Daquan Finn at quarterback, Penny Boone, for those of you who haven't seen him at running back, he's a beast and extremely fast as well. So they've got guys. But we'll see if Miami O can do what they did the first time around. I'll throw this in here real quick. Head coach Jason Candle. Um, Ralph mentioned some point spread records that weren't good for him. His name is also being tossed around the last few days for multiple head coaching jobs. And you just wonder if that's more of a distraction than focus for him and the Toledo team. Um, like I say, his name is brought up in a lot of talks for a lot of different teams. So we'll see if that hurts Toledo at all. Which team can make productive offensive adjustments in this game? I talked about how bad the offense was in game one. Whichever team can make some adjustments probably um, comes out on top here as far as point spread is concerned. And I'll just go back to this. Toledo was here last year. They played a team very, very similar to Miami. Oh, they played Ohio U last year in this game. And the reason why they're similar here is because Ohio U was without their starting quarterback, Curtis Work. He got hurt toward the end of the year, didn't play in the game. Toledo scraped by 17 to 7. Nothing impressive about it, nothing dominant about it. Just wonder if they go about business the same way here. Um, you're getting eight points. If I had to play, I would look towards Miami O plus the eight. Uh, I trust Chuck Martin more than I trust Jason Candle. And where total is concerned, like I said earlier, you just can't argue anything regarding the under, whether you wanted to play it by quarters, by halves, or full game. I couldn't argue anybody off of an under in this contest.